Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing Magic and we are playing five color 100 card brawl with Cody Vociferous Codex. So three mana, one four. You can't cast permanent spells, but you can pay for it to tap it and add five mana, one of each color, Wooberg. Whenever, when you cast your next in, next spell this turn, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile an instant or sorcery card with lesser mana value until end of turn you may cast the card without paying its mana cost uh put each other card decks all this way to the bottom round of order anyway so basically the value of cody is that if we're casting lots of spells in our deck then that's really good and with a hundred card deck we can end up doing some pretty fun stuff uh i was initially thinking of putting in the uh the ultimatums and stuff like that just like ramp up with cody because it does give a little bit of ramp it's a three mana ramp spell that gives us all the colors that we need uh and so as long as our stuff only has one of each pip you know so like a prismaric command can give guaranteed be cast with it you know just like things like that so we can end up casting other cheaper spells for free as long as we're using cody with it so that's the main idea of this is play out cody we do have permanents uh in this deck as well so we don't necessarily always want uh cody out on the battlefield because we want to ramp up we have arcane signets things like that as well to make sure that we can play out our other main win con so what is the win con if you can play out cody and you can't cast permanent spells there's actually it takes away a lot of uh ways to actually win the game <laughs> and so we have to be able to win with just spells and how do we do that approach of the second sun is the easy one to go to uh, let's bring it over here real quick so you can see it approach of the second sun uh can i bring it higher Come on, work with me there there we go that's better uh approach the second sun seven mana if this spell was cast from your hand if you cast another spell name approach the second sun this game you win the game otherwise put approach the second sun into its owner's library seven from the top you gain seven life so it gains us life which is nice we can cast this one and as long as we cast it two times great uh if we use cody's ability to cast this it doesn't actually put it on into the into that yet it doesn't resolve cody's ability will go off before approach the second sun will resolve kind of like cascade but only for instance in sorcery so then we'll cast that card and then approach it to the second sun why the resolve or not if it gets countered goes back to uh seven from the top actually if it gets countered goes to the graveyard which makes it difficult to cast again uh but if we can cast it again then we win that game there we do have counter spells to make sure that that can go through and we can use approach of the second sun to win the game we have an alternate win con with guild gates <laughs> we we are playing mazes end in this deck and so let's go ahead and bring this over here too um mazes end i don't know why it worked for that one okay mazes end uh, enters about a full tapped and it adds a colorless mana we can pay three to tap it uh uh, return it to its owner's hand, search your library for a gate card, put it the battlefield, then shuffle. If you then control 10 or more gates with different names, you win the game. So if this is our 10th card, we got all of our gates out already, then we can use this ability, tap it, and go grab our 10th gate and then win the game. Uh, and so that is a way that we can win as well. That's kind of our two main, like, we win the game combos that we have. The rest of it is just value. We have magma opuses and you know we can just go go for value, play a lot of control, have some big hitters with like Gate Colossus or uh, other things like that or Gate Breaker Ram, which can be really big hitters. Golos just getting so much value that they can't keep up and we end up killing them eventually. But those are the main win cons. We have Approach of the Second Sun and then we have Amazes End, which I think is really, really fun. That also means that we're playing lots of tapped lands and a lot of slower stuff. But with Cody being able to be a colorless creature that come out on turn three to be a good blocker and everything like that and we're actually fine if it dies for the first time because we want to get to the value but we also just want to be able to cast our board wipes on turn four which we have plenty we have wrath of god whelming wave Eat extinction extinction event we have doom scar fumigate we have a bunch of gates of blazes like things on the turn three slot here gate gates of blaze definitely clarion um uh, i also probably should bring swiftling suns again it, it's kind of hard because i'm trying not to have too many things with two mana pips so that cody can actually help ramp up to it a little bit easier uh but there's uh, those things we do need we have a bunch of removal in the early game as well to make sure that we can at least take care of their stuff keep them off on the defense not be able to uh to you know complete their their combos and like that make sure that we get rid of their creatures in the early game and then eventually you just keep ramping up and so we have tons of ramp in this deck as well tons of ways to make sure we're playing additional lands we have azusa we have dryad I, i'm not going through every single card here because it's 100 cards so just let you guys know i'm trying to give the basic ideas that we have with this deck we have crucible worlds in case any any of our uh our gates go to the graveyard we have only one of every gate which there technically is 11 gates because we also have um what's it called the uh, gateway plaza so that counts as the 11th gate for us it does count as a gate here uh and so there's 11 gates available so even if one does end up going away we still have the chance to get the 11th one and win with mazes end uh so we have ways to win with this crucible worlds and making sure that we can 
have stuff go to the graveyard and still somehow bring them back uh play some lands from the graveyard but just a bunch of ways to play additional lands make sure we're getting out of our gates as fast as possible uh in the early game a few permanents to make sure that those just work really well with us playing lots of stuff a lot of two mana uh ramp spells because that's just good and that's the deck guys uh swords of plow chairs lightning bolt are actually available in this format uh and so there's actually some really cool cards like that here uh, this is really exciting i just i'm excited to be playing this i hope you guys enjoy it we're gonna dive into it. i don't know what else to talk about because I, I think that's good enough so let's let's dive into it here we go wish me luck all right up against eight and uh only one gate a little bit awkward <laughs> we actually want more gates but we do have colors uh, lots of things that do add any color so that's nice gateway plaza a little bit funky uh let's let's go ahead and keep this hand we have prismar command the sinister sabotage is actually enough crucible worlds is a little bit awkward um, I, I like this hand just because of com command tower and we can get out Cody on turn ho Hopefully turn three with an untapped land, but uh, We'll keep this. Yeah, so we have triome into gateway plaza play it tapped into command tower play out Cody Hopefully we hit a fourth land. There it is Hello And then we can hopefully start you know casting centers of sabotages anything like that and start getting free spells free ramp free whatever that we need and life is good open the gates um and seize the day let's play gateway plaza pay one so auto pay there pass turn now we have our colors at least and we have a gate out in the battlefield Definitely want more of those. Open the gates might be a better play than... No, we're, we're playing Cody. So, uh, yeah, Command Tower, Cody. Yeah, this is sweet. So now we can cast literally anything, basically, from here on out. With this uh, two lands to tap for anything, good stuff. Mindstar could be pretty fun to cast with Cody. The hard part with that is actually, when does it storm off? So we cast it and then Cody's ability goes off, which will go let us find another another uh, spell to cast. And then does the storm trigger and go on to everything? All right, exiles Cody. Uh, we'll take action, put it back in here. That's fine, I suppose. I guess I could have left it there and gone for like casualties of war at some point or whatever, but that's yeah, fine. All right, let's play out um do i want to use open the graves here i could go for open the graves grab another guild gate play out swamp and that way i can hold up uh sinister sabotage or this up against wrath huh um that just lets us do more than one thing on this turn than just play gate but we do also just need to be playing gates as fast as possible so play out a gate um sorcery speed Yeah, let's pass the turn. Hold up our counter spell, Prismari Command. We're not in a rush necessarily, <laughs> so I guess we, we hold up. I have a hard time playing control though. You, you guys know this about me. It's it's hard for me to do. But as long as we keep hitting lands every single turn, we should be in good shape. I could use Prismari Command just to draw cards here. Destroy Shadow Sphere. Um, I, I want to draw cards, so let's draw cards here. Do I want to create a treasure to start ramping, or is Shadow Sphere actually worth getting rid of? Let's make a treasure. So target us on both. Uh, Crucible Worlds is a little bit of a dead card at times. World Tree is interesting. Um, although not really necessary here when we have open the gates and other things like that. Like, it's not necessary here. Um, I can get rid of World Tree. I can get rid of, um, Swamp and hold on to Crucible Worlds, and then I can play it later. Let's do that. That gives us things to do. We have open the gates to go find our land that we want to play. Uro would be... Uro changes things a little bit with Crucible. Okay, open the gates. Let's grab uh, any gate is good, but what colors do we need? Black and green are worthwhile. Let's go green and blue. Black and blue here. Yeah. Yeah, because we already had the black and green one there. Um, 
I don't actually have a land to play. Let's hold up, hold up counters and stuff. Pass the turn. So we, I think we have three cards that let us actually search up for Maze's End as well. We have Golos, which use, works. Um, hmm. Let's counter this. Raph is a little bit weird because it's just their commander. They can play another one, Lightning Bolt. Uh, does that kill Raph? We have we have other ways to kill Raph, so I'm fine. To the bottom. Goes back to man zone. It's six mana. Uh, a lot of their deck is probably going to be things that they can just cast at its and speed. The whole point of this is that they can cast things with flash and be able to cast lots of artifacts and maybe potentially combo off at instant speed. Uh, luckily, we do have a few ways to destroy their stuff. Um, in fact, we they're down to one mana. We have Casualties of War to destroy a land. Artifact and stuff. Yeah, this seems, that seems good. Um, what land am I destroying? Probably Castle Vantress. Yeah, let's try it for this. All right, so land, enchantment, artifact, target artifact, uh, gateway, I guess enchantment here. Okay, so I think it's Vantress. Okay, one mana, they could have Swan Song. They could have Spell Pierce or something like that. I, I'm hoping they don't. Opponent just gives it up. Sweet, yes, there we go. <laughs> All right, not too shabby. All right, up against Gitrog Monster, and an untapped land would be nice for Mind Stone, but we do have enough mana to get to a Cody eventually. Uh, Gate Colossus is awkward. Um, I don't actually have the stuff for Creative Outburst as well. Golos is really the main thing I like here, and then potentially Whelming Wave. I'm not sure if they're going for creatures though here. Um, I, I think we, we free mulligan that one away. All right, there's a there's a gate. Not that many lands, but Seagate Restoration. Don't actually have the ability to play is uh, Inquisition, but we have Lightning Bolt. Sure. All right, so gate pass the turn. Wayward Swordtooth is sweet, so play this out tapped. Pass the turn. Uh, hopefully, we find more lands to make that worthwhile. That would be nice. Otherwise, we might play Cody first. Emergent Sequence. Uh, we definitely Lightning Bolt this. All right, that is an extra land, uh, which means I think we do go for Wayward Swordtooth. So pay two, Swordtooth. Hollow Fountain tapped past the turn. Um... Yeah, and Cody into Helia just gain life is still nice. Gateway Plaza. All right, so yeah, Cody. Gateway Plaza, pay for it. We didn't have black, so Acquisition wasn't on the table there. Uh, another land. Actually, wait, uh, we can play Mind's Desire, which I think is still worth playing. Like, it gives us a lot of extra free spells to, to play, and if... Um, so what does it say? It's all top card of library until end of turn. You may play that card without paying its mana cost. Um, and then storm. The issue is we can't play any, um, permanents that we have, which we do have enough, very small number of them, but we do have enough that it could happen. And I think what we're trying to do right now is just get up to enough lands to get the city's blessing. We can get rid of Frexian tower with Heliod's intervention. Um, so let's activate Cody. And is it Mind's Desire? I don't know. It's kind of funky. We're, we're going to do it. Why not? All right. So. Oh, the storms goes off first. It doesn't actually have the chance to do anything else. All right. Well, that's cool, I guess. Pro Spiral. Well, not as cool as I was hoping for. Um, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> 
I it was I wasn't sure. I wanted to test that out to see what would happen with Binds Desire. If so, it goes on the stack. So storm happens immediately as soon as it goes on the stack, uh, which it makes sense because otherwise it could be countered while it's on the stack, whatever. And so I wasn't sure if it would count it as zero or if it would get an extra copy. And I figured with extra copies, it, there was just too much value there while they were tapped out to to not try to get ahead. But Heliod's intervention just destroy the Frexen Arena would have been better. All right, Cody's gone. Take action. Uh, do we just play him out again? Magma Opus. Didn't hit a land. Let's play Cody and Inquisition. Get rid of no lands, actually. Paradise Street, I guess, is worse off for us than Azusa with no lands in hand. Um, drawing extra cards with this. Yeah, that's kind of funky. I Azusa does let them play extra stuff with Gitrog, though, which I think lets them keep getting stuff back to hand. So it's more of a combo with Gitrog. I'm trying to remember what all this does. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Uh, whenever more lands print to graveyard, uh, draw a card. Yeah, so it's just the ability to keep coming back, uh, playing, um, Sacrifice lands over and over and over again is the whole benefit. And so Azusa would make it worse for us. Uh, not a whole lot of gates. We have three gates out. That's definitely not, not enough. I can go for Fumigate here. Get rid of the Gitrog. Swords of Plowshares is actually pretty nice. All right, Swords. Um, yeah, we were one away from the Magma Opus. So let's go. We're trying to find... Um, we're trying to find spells that we can help us find land. So Heliod's Intervention... Um, Can I can I do this for however much I want it to be? So one, two, X four. I believe I can just target the same artifact four times, right? Or does it not work for that? Yeah, so I have to have the actual target. So I, I can do it for three and just find hopefully an explorer or something like that, which I guess is, is still good. So let's just go X one. It's a little bit awkward, but It'll let us find something. Ah, oh, counterspell. Well, bummer. <laughs> Dang it. Um, let's pass the turn. Drats. <laughs> I so the right play was probably to uh to to just gain that amount of life, but letting him keep a Frexian Arena just doesn't feel right. Yep. All right, Demir Guildgate. Um, I think at this point I do Fumigate. Swan Song. Man, I found all of my counter spells this way. Uh, take action. Yep. It's, it's really awkward and they go away for forever uh, that, that is the one awkward part it's nice that you can get counter spells so you can do that at some point like you can always try to have that happen but it's it makes it inconsistent so we can play out cody again and then we have magma opus next solemn simulacrum Yeah, Field of the Dead. Uh, I need a Field of the Dead. I, I'm going to add that right after this. <laughs> I totally forgot about Field of the Dead. And that's an alternate win con that would be really good for us because we do have lots of ways to go digging for lands. Not that, that it looks like that, but, you know, we do. All right, so I can play out Magma Opus or Cody here. Um, they're getting wide enough. It's getting a little bit annoying. I can pay three Magma Opus, kill two of their guys, get a blocker when they attack in draw cards. I, I think that's worthwhile. 
also just creating four fours maybe we do go with that for that the whole idea of cody is that we do want to play him out and then play seven mana spells eight mana spells and then get free spells later on so let, let's try to go for cody one more turn hopefully they don't have removal All right, so block down to 23. Massacre Worm. Oh, you got to be kidding. Whoa. Yeah, take action. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool there. We have board wipes that we can find. But she's thirst can kill either Ugin or Massacre Worm here. Um, I can still go for Magma Opus. I just don't think that's quite powerful enough at this point. Um, Cody's really far away. Yeah. I, maybe it's it's pay for Magma Opus and hope for a board wipe. So pass the turn. We can kill two things. Tap two things down. So Magma Opus, kill, kill, tap, and I guess it doesn't matter with these ones. Tap. Actually, maybe I maybe I should tap their a land or something. Ah, whatever. It keeps us alive with a decent amount of health for an extra turn. I, I should have... Yeah, that's that's fine. We got a 4-4 now. They can't really attack in as aggressively. Probably with just these two. Blink of an eye, disallow. Hmm. That's a big boy. Death and Clarion is pretty good. And then blink of an eye and whatever like this that that's not bad. And I can even bounce the beanstalk giant and then gain some life with this hit the Ugin. That's not a great play. So yeah, Deafening Clarion destroys some stuff. They get a lot of card draw from this. They get three cards out of it. Um, I can't really disallow enough stuff to make it worthwhile. I think it's better just to try to stop what else they might do. Um, Blood Chief's Thirst is interesting. I have a blocker for the 13-13. They just drew a bunch of cards. I, I think we need to get rid of the Ugin while we can and then just hope that we can survive one more turn. Otherwise, I mean, like, we're already way, way, way behind. And so I think it's a matter of we have to get a little bit lucky and be greedy on a couple plays to try to then get ahead with, yeah, so much card draw. Oracle, yikes. Liliana coming soon. <laughs> Whenever one or more lands are put into your graveyard from anywhere. So Mill does actually help it, doesn't it? Alright, so block there. Down to 12. With Blink, we still have the ability to live. Barely. Nope, not anymore. Yeah, definitely not anymore. <laughs> Alright, so board wipe or bust. Oogin. Oh, yeah. Three damage to face. Yeah, okay, we're dead. Sounds good. They got us. <laughs> we tried. It's all good. Next one. All right, I'm against Daft Punk Fiction. Man, with how many how many uh, gates we have, I've been really surprised that I've not been running into them like at all. So this is definitely a free mulligan here. All right, we got we got a gate now, and secure this route, which is nice. Uh, so I, I guess we keep this. It, if we don't have a lot of interaction, that's better. Okay, guild gate tap. 
a blood crypt and a lightning bolt if we have to. Yeah, so play this tapped. Pass the turn. Uh, we're going to go Chromatic Lantern into Circuitous Root before Cody. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah. So Lantern into Lightning Bolt. Kill a Tiny Bones. Whoa, my screen just went black. What's going on? That was weird. Reveal their hand, discard a card, amass one. So Crackle of Power is an alternate wink on I have as well. Just if we ramp up like crazy, it's a thing that can kill stuff. We are ramping and so it can kill a lot of things on the board as well. But that that is our alternate alternate wink on that's probably not very likely, but you know it's a thing. Got rid of the root, yeah. Figured as much. Alrighty, then. Let's play out. I think Oracle is the best play here. Casualties of War is going to be pretty sweet if we do get an extra land off the top. Hmm. Trying to play as many permanent spells before we play Cody as well, because then we can't play Oracle anymore. Swan Song does counter discard spells, at least, though. So we can play Cody and still hold that up. They have a way to kill this now? Oh, Fatal Push. That's, that's fine. Uh, so play Cody. Pass the turn. Swang, shan, Swang Song should keep it alive. Eliminate. Swang Song. Swan. Dude, I can't spoke right. I can't say that one. It's too difficult for me. If they need to spell, spend two spells to kill this, that's okay. And then I can either bo uh, Wrath of God or play it again on this next turn. Casualties of War can be pretty nice too. Getting rid of lands. Is that artifact or enchantment? A creature enchantment. Okay, down to 21. Link of an eye. Well, let's play Cody again. Pass the turn. I mean, if we get up to this casualties, it's pretty nice. Uh, we won't be able to yet. All right, yeah, now it's getting too expensive. Fine. <laughs> All right, we need to land. So we can start playing casualties and stuff. Blink of an eye for bounce and draw is nice. Tiny bones. Um, I actually would rather kill this than bounce it to hand and have it be cheap for them, right? I want to make it expensive. So we're going to go for Wrath of God. Um, if I shock myself for a blink of an eye then. I don't think I do, but. So if they hit a land, they can play it for six. We have casualty, so let's just play this tap. Pass the turn. Another land, we can play Cody as well. Oh, it takes the casualty of war. Drats! Open the gates and seize the day. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as we have Chromatic Lantern, right? Um, we need more blue. Blue, black, why not? And pass the turn. Uh, scavenger so i have crackle of power that can be really useful to kill lots of things uh I, I think right now i'm just wanting card draw so let's just slow them down take your turn doing nothing a braid is nice that does kill that world tree cody pass the turn oh wow Nice. Take action. 
What can they actually hit here? I don't think there's much of anything. Oracle Modea is the only thing. Okay. So play planes. I think I think it is another Cody. It's where this is. is. <laughs> it's what we do. Up to nine. Discard a braid. Yeah, a braid. I have to discard a card. Oh, this is rough. Murder Shrider, they have enough to kill Cody. And this has been rough. Brutal. I mean, that's what Tiny Bones is supposed to do, but. um, We don't have any gods, I don't think, in this deck. Unfortunately, that's not one of our win cons is World Tree. This is just going to get discarded, but we at least have a way to kill whatever they bring back and other stuff. So Oracle Moldaya, land off the top. Good for you. Two lands off the... <laughs> Oi. Good for you, sir. Yeah, you can play an additional land. Go ahead and play that one. You can do it. Good for you. Uh, now I'm just hoping that they play out stuff that we can Gates of Blaze and get some value out of it. How many Gates do we have? One, two. <laughs> we have so many Gates in this deck. We uh, Why can't we find any Gates? I mean, like, to an extent, I like that. I want to have in the early game, like, two Gates and two untapped lands. But then I want to find Gates basically the rest of the time. Turgrid's Lantern. Ah, doesn't it play it on the Turgrid side. I, I guess that kind of makes sense. We're playing mostly incense and sorcery stuff. Um, is it worth having the Oracle of Moldiah die? Let's lose three, three life this time. We can't get down to 10. Otherwise, we're dead pretty quickly. I, I did want to be able to kill this, so that's nice. All right, Gates of Blaze. Oh, right. I didn't have enough gates. I already said that earlier. Pass the turn. Right. I was thinking I could kill that. Awkward. Triumph kills the guy. Hits for four. Tiny Bones kills us pretty soon. So, yeah, they're probably playing out Tiny Bones here. Requires us to have an empty hand. So Mythos of Nethroi would be super nice to be able to kill this guy, but we have to kill Tiny Bones to not be dead. And then three, seven, we have to discard, we have to destroy his Chromatic Lantern, so. I think they can activate in response, and so let's let's just go ahead and kill this now while we can. Brings it back. Hits, does this. They can do it a couple times. Actually, they don't guarantee goddess. They have four, three, so sacrifice permanent. How many times can they untap? They can untap. Yeah, so that's game now. You can untap twice, so yeah, concede. Alrighty then. Alright, guys. So this deck was pretty fun. I actually did enjoy playing the Cody version. And of course, the whole idea of this is fun. We did win one, lost two. I don't I don't think this is uh, a deck that's gonna win many, many games. At the same time, though, I expected to find more pieces that ramped us up maybe i just need to build more of those into the deck because it wasn't a ton necessarily but we still have a lot we had scape shift as a way to go dig like destroy all the cards that weren't gates to go find gates we had you know, lots of things to run into and the whole idea of cody is that we could have a chance to run into those more often things like scape shift things like you know um was it Securitas Root and everything. So we get up to these big expensive spells, cast those and find these. Unfortunately, we, we always found Swan Song, Counterspell, all the kind of things instead. We were able to activate Cody a few times in, in the matchups and just didn't get 
good hits with those, uh, which is part of what's going to happen. Like sometimes you just won't get good hits. Sometimes you won't find the pieces you need. And that's the issue of building a deck to be able to handle lots of situations rather than just a couple. But we were able to play the game and we were able to manage the opponent because we had enough removal, enough stuff, enough interaction with the deck. And I felt like we were able to get the Cody pretty quickly. I mean, Cody's only three mana. So we were able to play Cody still, even with gates and tap lands. It didn't feel bad necessarily. The gates plan seemed kind of funky. Uh, we never found approach of the second sun. So maybe some sort of tutor would be better uh, for that. Uh, at the same time, though, casting eight mana spells with Cody should have us a chance, give us a chance to find approach of the second sun and play it for free. And so that that is kind of the whole idea is that we have a few eight mana spells uh, in there to be able to do that. Do we only have one? OK, we only have one mana spell, one eight mana spell. So we should have found more. Uh, we have X spells as well. That was the other thing. We had X spells that could also do it. but. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a fun deck, uh, and we'll see you guys in the next one. I'll be doing more of this because this is a blast to me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.